Right, so as promised, I think I'd said I would give a walk around the Project Mini uh, just to have a look, just to pick out some bits. It's probably not as good as it looks in the photos, um, but the fact that it runs is a complete bonus. So this is pretty much as I picked it up, I haven't really touched it. You could almost call it a barn find, I guess. It's not been on the road since... Um, 2007 um, it's been in a garage um, in a damp garage by the looks of it because it looks like the garage was leaking um, it certainly accumulated some rust while it's been sitting in the garage but let's just have a look around it quickly so from what I could see in the photos from the eBay advert um, definitely needs a scuttle panel uh, and a front end as well so as you can see under the headlights is pretty grotty um, even things like the headlamps uh, they're cloudy inside so I don't know whether I'll be able to clean them out or I have to get some new headlamps for it um, it's got a wavy grill I might get rid of that and just revert to a standard uh, slatted Cooper grill um, you can see even the spotlights are milky inside so whether I can clean them out, I don't know. If I can, that would be quite useful. Um, wing on this side is obviously quite bad. Uh, the bumpers, the front bumper's not bad. There's a little dink in it there. I'd, I'd like to actually save the bumpers because they're the original Rover ones, which are quite hard to come by now. Obviously, you heard the engine running last week, or sorry, last sort of update. Um, the engine runs now. Still got three off the clutch and I'm going to fit the drive shaft in it in a moment. Um, but just look how rusty it is. Uh, it didn't have the bonnet on it when I went to go and pick it up. So I assume it's been left with a bonnet off and water's just been dripping onto the engine. Because that is, yeah, that is very, very rusty, isn't it? Um, so there seem to be a few electrical gremlins because the battery light stays on. Um, when you connect the battery up, the bonnet itself looks fine. Um, it, the windscreen has been replaced at some point because it hasn't got the SRS warning stickers in it. Uh, these look like uh, wooden picket fiberglass arches, so they're not the original arches. So I'll probably do away with them and go back to the original plastic arches. Uh, obviously it's got 7.5 inch uh, brake conversion in it for 10 inch wheels, but it's got 12 inch Rover wheels on it. So it looked like this had been worked on in the workshop, um, obviously in between. So as I say, the brake conversion has been fitted on it. It doesn't look like it's been driven on those brakes because uh, um, the discs were still pretty clean where you move the, where the pads have been covering it. It's got gas shocks on the front of it as well, but not on the back. Uh, I can sort of understand that because they're a pain to fit on the back because you've got to take the fuel tank out. Uh, and it's got high lows on the front, so it's looking really low at the moment, but that's just because the high lows are on their lowest setting. Um, so both sides, it wants an A panel. Uh, doors are not bad. It's a tiny bit of corrosion down the bottom here. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know whether I'll do the door. Um, this rear quarter's good. All the wheels want refurbing, and it wants four new tyres on it. It's whether I get these wheels refurbished or just buy some um, sort of original sort of looking Rover replicas because it's about 330 quid for a full set. It's probably going to cost me a full set with tyres. It's probably going to cost me 300 quid to have them refurbished. So it's just how original I want to keep it. Back end's in very good condition. I don't think there's any rust on the back end actually. Um... Even the rear valance is pretty clean. Uh, and down the driver's side again, door skins, very good this side. There's barely any rust on that at all. Uh, there's some rust in this rear quarter, so that I want sorting out. Um, and the A panel's a little bit worse on this side. The worst bit, like I mentioned before I bought it actually, is the roof 
So the roof's corroded here. Hopefully that's not gone too badly. Hopefully it's not any, there's not any holes underneath that. So it's kind of this section here. Um, it does just look like surface corrosion at the moment, a little bit here. a uh, little bit there, a little bit there so hopefully we can sort that out and let me grab a torch so we'll look at the seals so as you can see they're pretty grotty looking not going to poke that too much. I hadn't noticed the, um, what's this, the, I can't remember what that panel's called around the front there now. Uh, but there's a big hole there as well. Um, but as you go back from about here, the seal's pretty good. See what I mean? So this seal's never been replaced, that's the original Rover seal. Uh, this whole rear part of it's pretty spot on to be honest um, Yeah, I've just got to rub it all back and clean it really Underneath at the back I did get a look at the subframe. It doesn't look too bad, but you never really know do you? It does have a stainless steel exhaust on it. I can't see what make it is yet. I don't think it's Jan speed doesn't look like it so the rear balance looks pretty good um, bit of corrosion on the battery tray but I think that's just hopefully there's no holes inside the boot you've already seen is pretty good and then again the seal on this side original seal again Hasn't been welded yet, uh, but um, there's a big hole here. Can touch the carpet there. Doesn't look too bad inside that wheel arch. So let's have a look at the inside. And unfortunately, the inside is has been very damp uh, so the headlining looks horrible just done the headlining on PL I really don't fancy doing another headlining so I might see if that cleans up but from experience on PL I don't know it's got an aftermarket centre console on here which you can see is grotty and horrible as anything uh, but I can see from inside there and the carpet's wet so where I've had it running uh, almost certain that the heater matrix is leaking so the first thing I'm going to do very shortly is take all the carpets and interior out um, just because it stinks in here and I can start sort of getting it aired um, dash is not too bad still a load of old crap in the glove box and that old tax discs hankies uh, it's got uh, alloy door handles on it, though they, they're not original. Seats themselves are pretty good. They look like they just need a clean up. And like I say, the smell is awful. It's lucky you can't smell this, because it really is bad. Someone pointed out on my last video, actually, that these are John Cooper garages, accessory, floor mats. So, they're a bit knackered, I think. Uh, so that's that. Best thing about the car so far, though, is it runs like a sewing machine. I mean, that's beautiful. It just starts on the button. Idles nicely no smoke it even smells right if you know what I mean so 
so that's that for the moment i am gonna put this near side drive shaft in and i'm gonna see if i can get that clutch freed off so this is inside the near side wheel arc and there's a uh, quite a bit of corrosion here but it doesn't go up very high um looking up inside even the closing panel looks at, intact up there for the scuttle panel um, like I say, gas shocks on the front, I don't think they've been on the road, they're far too clean. They corrode quite a lot, those gas shocks. Uh, and it's got high lows on it that are set on the lowest setting, so even though we're not going to drive it around on it at the moment, I'm going to wind them up just to lift it up a bit. Looks a bit forlorn sitting so low. And again, these discs, they're, they're new. They've not been on the road, have they? So, uh, and the calipers, the pads. In fact, I can still see the pads have got the the coating on them. They've never been used. Uh, whether they're any good now, I would think they are. It's got fluid in it. Uh, these discs will clean up. Right, guys, we're already getting well stuck in here. So the drive shaft's in now. Um, I've adjusted up these gas shocks and i have fitted a new steering rack boot just because i had one i couldn't leave it split while i'm here so that's that side done uh, oh and i've adjusted the high low so i'm going to do the same on the other side right now. guys that's this side done as well so i really didn't plan on getting that stuck in today but um again this side i fitted a new steering rack boot because it was split i fitted a new track rod end on this side i've adjusted up the high low um I've adjusted up the shock absorber as well uh, and as you can see looking around this side again not too bad um, inside there is not fantastic but I know it needs some welding so right guys I continue to tinker with this obviously I've just found the floor is sopping wet in here from the leaking heater matrix um, so I'm going to be starting this car up and moving it around and I don't want it just to be constantly pouring water on the floor because it's going to it's going to go against me so i'm not going to replace the heater matrix at the moment but all i'm going to do is just connect these pipes together with a hose joiner um, so the heater won't work there'll be no water flowing through it but that will stop it leaking leaking obviously when i change the heater matrix at a later date i can reinstate it but for the moment it's just like a quick sort of field fix um just so we stop flooding the inside of the car with horrible smelly coolant now we're probably going to lose a bit of water here but uh, all this carpet and everything's coming out so if it was uh, <laughs> your own car with your nice uh, your nice sort of beige carpet you'd probably want to be a little bit more careful <laughs> I have already taken these clips off by the way because they're a flipping nightmare We didn't lose too much water there, did we? Doesn't even matter too much if I kink these pipes. It doesn't matter if water doesn't flow through them. The heater valve's up there, so all that happens when you turn it on cold is it just stops the water passing through the heater matrix. In modern cars, they're a bit more advanced than that, but on an old Mini, it's just a little water valve. These clips were horrible. I do actually have the special tool for doing these, but... Why use a tool when I can do it the hard way? So that's that bypass that won't leak anymore 
which is good. Uh, I think I'm going to call it quits on this for today. I, I was going to take all the interior out, but I'm just running out of time. So uh, the carpet's all wet in there. Can't bear to leave it like that. So I've taken out this manky console. It is horrible. Look at all that mould. Uh, and I was about to say, um, I remember these. They were kind of a period thing. They were made by a company called Custom Consoles, I think. They might even still be going. You might even still be able to buy these. But I remember them in sort of the mid to late 90s. Everyone had one. Um, they're all right, apart from if you're like me and six foot two with big feet. Uh, it gets in the way of the clutch pedal there. But you could get various variations of this. People put lights underneath them. I had a 98 Cooper Sports Pack and I bought one and it had blue lights on it and I fitted speakers in the side. But like I say, the biggest thing is it it, it gets in the way of your clutch foot. And I was just looking and look at that, I was right. A sticker in there, custom consoles of Salisbury. So I think they're still going. Uh, the annoying thing is, so I do remember these now because I remember I bought one and then my father-in-law just copied the design, bought some cheap MDF done it for half the price um, but they had these little bit of cardboard that went in the back and directed the flow from the heater now that presents a bit of a problem so rather annoyingly this one's been fitted properly um, and that included cutting the heater box to redirect the air so um, so yeah I'm gonna need a new well, if I want it back to normal, I'm going to need a new heater box. <sighs> Look at all this water on the floor. What am I going to do about that? I should get the carpets out now, shouldn't I? See that dripping? Um, I just I keep saying I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'll have nothing to do in the winter if I don't stop. Right, so I've got the heater box out now. Uh, can you see better what I mean about the front of the heater box now? They've cut it, uh, which is a bit of a shame. It's leaking water all over there. Um, so yeah, I might be able to get another heater box. In fact, I'll have to get one, won't I? That's a pain, isn't it? Oh well. Um, and I've got the carpets out now as well. Uh, so they're the rear mats. They're actually pretty good, although that one's a bit soggy. They're quite nice them because they're fitted properly, but I think they're going to be scrap. They just feel a bit floppy. Uh, inside though, uh, I'm really pleased. It's looking pretty good. This side looks spot on. There's that hole there in the inner seal. Uh, so I'm going to have to repair the inner seal. It's just how much I decide to do. I mean, back here, look at that. Uh, that's like new. That's really, really good. Uh, but going around the other side, What someone has unfortunately done, all of this side and the carpet was soaked in old engine oil. Now, uh, what, what that's done is it's made all this go all squidgy here. Um, it's soaked it all in. Um, now, I don't know whether they've done that on purpose or whether someone's spilt some oil in here. I kind of suspect it's probably being done on purpose. It's kind of an old school thing. My father-in-law used to do it all the time, you know, paint the subframes and paint the, the, you know, the exposed metal bits in old sump oil. That was what it was, old sump oil. Um, <clears throat> yeah, stop it from rusting. It's just very, very messy. It's impregnated into all the carpets, which is a bit of a pain. This side, I just started having a poke. So again, front of the floor here, um, it's going to want repairing. Unfortunately, some numpty um has jacked the floor right up in the middle so it's really sort of raised up there I need to beat that back down again a little bit on the other side quite common not unusual for many but the floor ain't looking too bad at all let's go and look at the carpet So the carpet's actually in pretty good nick. I'm just going to leave it out here. Uh, hopefully it'll be dry for the next few days just to dry off. And this side, don't know if you can see, but it's all oily. 